Welcome to another video by Pharos Technology. Today we have a very special video on building dialogue forms. Literally, we're building dialogue forms that look like the regular dialogue boxes that Windows 10 or Windows 7 or Windows would put out to a user. The tips and tricks in this one are all very important all the way through, so be sure you listen all the way to the end to get every last one of them. And so let's get started. There are a few critical settings that you need when you're setting up a dialog box. The first is that you don't want any scroll bars on either side of the form. You don't want any navigation buttons to appear. You do want it to be in pop-up mode and you want it to be modal. Uh, modal meaning that the person has to respond to your dialog box before they can do anything else on the screen. So everything else will just give them an error bleep until they hit either the OK button or Run button or whatever you want them to hit or the Cancel button to get rid of the dialog box. The next thing is you don't want any record selectors. They're totally unnecessary. Border styling, there's a specific border style for dialog in Microsoft Access that allows you to make the form look like a dialog box. The next thing is you don't want your shortcut menu. You don't want them right clicking on your form and choosing something off of that menu. So you just totally disregard shortcut menus. The next thing is there's a few critical controls that belong on a dialog box. The first is going to be a default button. You want a default button because the default setting in Microsoft Access means that when the user hits the Enter key after giving input, it will automatically trigger the default button. The next thing is you want a Cancel button. The Cancel setting in Microsoft Access automatically closes the form if the user hits the escape key, which gives it a behavior like the Windows dialog box that opens up. And then you want to remove totally the control menu. In other words, you don't want them to minimize, maximize, or close the form with the buttons up in the upper right hand corner. You want them responding to the buttons that you give them on the form. Okay. Now, we're going to be using a parameter query to illustrate how the dialog box is set up. The parameter query is going to basically use criteria that's going to pick up information from the dialog box itself. Now, besides the default button and the cancel button, we're going to have input given from the user. Now, the input could be multiple text boxes. Usually, they are unbound and they push data into the query or next form that you're opening up. In this case, we're just going to use a simple single text box that's going to be unbound. And then in our query, it's going to point to that text box using the format forms to illustrate that it's a form. FRM dialog is going to be the name of our form. That's the dialog box form that we're going to create. And the unbound text box is going to be text zip code. So if you illustrate that in the actual query that we're going to put together, you see that down the criteria for zip code has that forms form dialog text zip code. Okay, so that's how we're going to set things up. So let's go ahead now and get started and actually build this form for you. And we're going to hit the create menu here and create a form in design view. Now, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and resize the form to be the approximate size of our, our dialog box that we're going to create. Then over on the property sheet, we want to click the All tab. And the first thing we're going to do is caption it. The caption that appears on the top of the form will be zip code. So zip code search is going to be our, our caption. It is going to be a pop-up form. It's going to be modal. We've talked about all these things previously. I don't like having it in data sheet view or layout view, so I'm going to make sure it only opens in one of two views, either form view or, or design view as I'm working on it. It's going to be dialogue for the border style. 
It's going to get rid of the record selectors. It's going to get rid of the cap navigation buttons. We're going to get rid of the scroll bars by saying neither. It's going to get rid of the control box, which gets rid of the close button and the min max button. So now that we have all the property sheet items set up, let's set up the header. So I'm going to put a date and time in the header. And there it pops the header in out of the header and footer ribbon item. When I hit title, it picks up the caption that I've already set for the form. Okay, let's move on to putting a logo on in the top or corner. Uh, I'm going to scroll down and put a little guy that's, that's at a computer there. Now let's get to the main detail part of our form. And in doing that, first thing I'm going to do is put the text box in there that I talked about. And notice it's an unbound text box and I'm going to give it a name. It's going to have no control source. So basically we're done and we're going to give the label a caption of zip code. Now we need a couple of buttons. First thing we need is, is the button that's going to run this query for us. Okay. So that will be under miscellaneous and it'll be run query and click next. Query dialog, remember that's the query that I showed you that we were going to use for this. So I'm going to choose that. And when I click next here, I'm going to just leave the text there that says run query. And so I'm going to call this one CMD run query. There we go. Click finish and open it up a little bit. Give it a little prettiness here. And then we'll put another button on here, which will be our, our cancel button. Okay. And so it's going to be under form operations. Uh, we want this one to close the form. So when we cancel, we want the form to close. Okay. And I'm going to click the text here and it's going to be a cancel button instead of a close form button. So I'm just going to type in the word cancel here and we'll click next. Yep. Resize the button to make it look like we, uh, like we intended it to look and we'll lengthen out the, the text box a little bit there. Okay. Now, after everything's done here, I'm just going to close things up a little bit, make it a little closer to the right size that we want it to be. And now remember the run button is to be a little bit special. We're going to come over here to the other tab and we're going to make it our default button. Remember the default button is the one that executes when we just hit enter. So it's logical to go ahead and type in the zip code and just hit enter that'll automatically run our button. We don't want it simply to just go to the next control, for example. We want it to actually execute that next button. Okay, the same thing is true with our cancel button. We have to make that a little bit special too. So we'll click on it and we'll turn it into an actual cancel button, which means that it will execute no matter where the cursor is at if the user hits the escape key. Okay, let's go ahead and add to our query button. What it does is it runs the query and then it stays open, which isn't very helpful. So let's add to that the close to close the form. And we're going to choose form for the object type and the object name is going to be form dialog. There we go. And go ahead and close that, save that. Okay, now we know that our run query button is going to close. And so uh, we're going to save it as FRM dialog, which is the name that the query will recognize when it wants to get back to that text object, the unbound text form. And here we, you see that we have a dialog box. It looks, uh, looks very sharp, very professional looking. Now I noticed that the date and time are a little bit far off to the right for some reason. Uh, so we'll go fix that here in a moment. But if we click on run query, it, the box closes like it's supposed to, it runs the query. So let's try that again. Let's open form dialog. Now we can open form dialog from anywhere. This is just getting that dialog box set up, but you can, you can see how to modify it and use it. Now that time I typed in the uh, zip code and hit enter this time. Yep. We hit enter the previous time I hit the escape key so that it automatically closed and we saw it automatically close. And if we uh, put it in design view, we can go ahead and fix that time and date there. Scoot it in just a little bit. There we go. 
And when we run that, so we can type in the zip code here. You can see that it, the date and time are all where it needs to be. Now, if you got some value out of this video, please hit that like button down there. Also, subscribe to the channel so you can have more good information uh, concerning a variety of Microsoft Access products. And we'll look forward to seeing you later. Thanks.